the fact that I haven't been on to catch a predator yet is like a miracle. Hey there. So where to start? Wow, was I underinformed about Shane Dawson's history. Wow. So I released a video last week in which I, for half of the video, talked about what I missed this summer. What I missed, meaning what I didn't have the capacity to focus on in terms of drama going on in the YouTube community. So part of my video was called Carmageddon, What I Missed regarding Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Tati Westbrook. And in that video, I was somewhat critical of Tati Westbrook, kind of dismissive because, uh, like, I'm only interested so much in her involvement in all of that situation. And I was pretty brief about my thoughts on Jeffree Star. I said straight up, he is a person and there's not really much else to say about him. But my thoughts on Shane Dawson, I had some kind of mixed emotions. I was neither in favor of nor was I outright condemning him as a person. I knew that he was under fire for some jokes, some videos, some remarks that he's made in the past that were of a racist nature or of a philic nature. And I had a couple of conversations with a couple of the people in my comments. And to those of you that had these conversations with me, thank you so much. This is why I love doing this and why I love having that respectful disagreement and debate in my comment section, because it, if we are open, enough uh, to be to the possibility of being wrong. We benefit so much from the possibility that we can be educated. And that is what I asked of you guys. If I'm wrong about something, please educate me um, or point me in the right direction or let me know your perspective. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. So again, thank you to those couple of people that had those conversations with me in the comments. I honestly probably would have gone on feeling the way I did about Shane Dawson in that situation and not knowing any more about it and really kind of feeling like an idiot when, once I did uh, learn more about it, kind of like I did right after I released that video. The criticism that I was receiving that I felt was very valid was that I was too soft on Shane Dawson, that given his history and what we've learned about, um, particularly what we've learned about here recently, he shouldn't get any sort of pass as somebody who still may be kind of like a good person. You guys never really hear me refer to anybody as a bad person. It's just a thing I do um, or don't do. But some people pointed out to me that I was too easy on him and expressed to me why. Uh, one person even expressed their hypothesis on why I was easy on him, saying that perhaps because I was so wrapped up in my own drama this summer, uh, perhaps I missed some details about the, the drama around Shane Dawson. And here's the thing, that person was right, but I didn't realize that as soon as I read that. I thought, no, I've, I've caught up. I mean, I've watched the videos where drama channels commented on this stuff. I've, I've seen these people's apology videos. I thought I knew more or less, more so more, uh, than, uh, than I knew about what we have been addressing. And it brought up a few interesting talking points. And these are very sensitive topics, I recognize. So I don't want to do them any injustice, but I will point out that if you know me to any extent, you understand that both racism and pedophilia are two massively important topics to me in my everyday life. I have pointed this out before, but some of you may not know. Um, so I'll go ahead and just kind of let you know kind of where I stand for one when it comes to pedophilia. I have an entire podcast in which at least half of the content has been dedicated to pedophilia, 
competitors and essentially what's wrong with the world in the internet and what can we do about that. And then the other side of me that is important to note, though it does not rule over any and everything and does not make my opinion more valid than the next person's. But because I look the way I do, I do feel the need to remind you guys every once in a while, especially when we're talking about this topic, what my ethnic background is. And I think here it's also important to note my age as well, which you guys have heard me mention a lot, um, because we are talking about racism and, you know, comedy at the time, which is something that we talk about a lot with Shane Dawson. So I look like a token white girl. I say that all the time. I am not. In fact, I am half Mexican. As a child, I spent a lot more time in the sun, so I did not look white. I recognize that I do now. Like, I I get it. And that's really like almost entirely due to the fact that I'm a homebody and terrified of melanoma. But anyway, I dealt with on almost a daily basis, people asking me the question, what are you? And I think if anybody is watching this is of mixed ethnic background or something that isn't just overtly obvious. Um, I think if you have a shared experience in that, you probably have been asked that before. What are you? Or people coming to conclusions that I am Hawaiian or Israeli. Um, and there's nothing wrong with people being mistaken, but this is all to say this is a new experience for me to express my opinions on the internet, and this has only happened <laughs> with YouTube, but where my opinions are completely shut down because I look white. So if for that reason, my opinions are completely invalid, then all I can say to you is that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being too quick to excuse Shane Dawson. I hope you at least hear me out when I say that I did not know the full scope and I am also kind of flabbergasted at why I didn't know. And I'll get to that too. But yes, for what it's worth, but I am experiencing something I've never experienced before where some people outright throw my opinions out the window because I look white. Whereas my entire lived experience has been that of an ethnic girl or exotic looking girl or what are you? Um, I really had no clue that I was white until my seventh birthday when my dad explained to me that he adopted me when I was a baby. So I know that's confusing to a lot of people. I actually have a picture back here. I really don't know how much you can see because this is almost a silly picture to put in a picture frame. Um, but it was just a funny moment where my Auntie Frances was photobombing a picture of me with my mother and my father. My mom's got her head turned, so like, what does that do for you? Not much. Um, there they are. Um, actually, no, the reason I have this framed is because my parents are divorced and that was a rare moment where I was able to get a photo with the both of them. So growing up, I had, have still a Mexican mother and a father who is black and Korean. And the only side of his family that we ever spent time with was his, the black side of his family, his paternal side. And then of course, my mom's side of the family is a big Mexican family. And they are really where we spent most of our kind of extended family time. So while I walk this earth reaping the privileges of a white person, I recognize that. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna ignore that fact. I have these other layers to me that don't show on the outside. And that is the environment I grew up in. Um, the, the, the cultures that were instilled in me, my family and the feeling that my mother's DNA, um, and whatever my father taught me. All of that does not matter. It doesn't matter to, uh, to the internet or to some of the internet. I know there are a lot of you out there who fully value all of these parts of me, but to some people on the internet, what my mom brings 
to me, to my life, to what shaped me and what my dad brought to me and my life and what shaped me doesn't fucking matter because I look white. So um, hmm. that's what makes me a little bit nervous um, to talk about these sorts of topics. But dude, this is such a complicated thing. To not have these conversations for fear of that criticism is worse. So I'm gonna go there. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is a super quick reminder to like this video and subscribe to my channel if that's something you wanna do. If that's not something you wanna do, just don't. I'll shut up and start talking now. First, I wanted to focus though on the jokes, remarks, videos, etc. that Shane Dawson made that made children a target. I understand um, that racism is a wildly important topic and especially right now is something that is top of mind for a lot of people as it should be. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get more criticism about that, about um, what Shane has said about children. So I knew about a couple of jokes he'd made, which he had apologized for. And at the time, it was just kind of like, yeah, those are some bothersome remarks that he's made, but he's apologized. He's admitted that it was all shock humor that really wasn't funny. And, you know, I gave the guy a chance. Then this new information came forward. Um, apparently, most of us didn't seem to know about a couple of things, and that being Shane Dawson pretending to in front of a poster of Willow Smith when she was 11 years old. And the other thing was a video. I've seen a clip over and over again. I mean, that works. <laughs> Let me see, this happens. Where Shane Dawson and his then girlfriend, Lisa, something, I don't know her last name, talking to Shane's 12 year old cousin about, he says the birds and the bees, but really they were talking about some pretty graphic and, and disturbing stuff. Those are the two things that have really come forward. Um, and I can confidently say that, that those are really the two things that came forward and the internet's focused on because while I have been preoccupied by other things, those things were in front of me a good bit over the summer. And they're disturbing as hell. And I said that in my last video. However, a handful of people in my comments recommended watching D'Angelo Wallace's special. I, I say special because that's how well produced his videos are. His specials on, on Jeffrey and Shane, but particularly Shane. And I did. As soon as I had those conversations, I did watch those videos and I did learn a lot. And so I'm really confused right now as to why I saw so much more on D'Angelo's video than I've ever seen. Shane Dawson has been one of the biggest creators on the platform. Why is it that these video clips that were very much public were not talked about more? I, I don't, I don't get that. And I don't understand how we, I say we, but I didn't watch Shane Dawson's content at that time, probably for a reason. But why did we collectively as a YouTube audience allow him to get famous? This is what I'm confused about. How did he get famous? And then just in 2020 is when all of this stuff came to light, right? I think a lot of people have that question. You know, why did we ever let this guy get away with this stuff? So, like I said, I thought that it was just a couple of little jokes here and there that were distasteful that he'd apologized for. And then, like I said, when I saw the video of him and Lisa talking to his cousin, I found that to be very disgusting. What I wasn't aware of were the sexual remarks he was making to underage fans on these Omegle chats. Is that what it's called? It was like a chat roulette or like Skype type of thing. Um, he was making pretty, yeah, very sexual remarks to his underage fans there. There was another instance where he and his mother pressured an underage fan to twerk on camera. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Now shut up and twerk. And mind you, all of this stuff was presented as a joke. And I think that that might be part of the reason he got away with a lot of this is that it's all just for laughs. Whereas say someone like Jeffree Star, the things that he's done were overtly mean spirited. And I do think that that counts for something. Um, but it's a lot easier to 
catch that sort of behavior, condemn that sort of behavior and write that person off than it is when this person's like, haha, oh, it's just jokes. So I do think that has something to do with why Shane Dawson continued to be and get more famous. There were also remarks that he made about underage fans' bodies and just sexual remarks in general made towards his underage fans as he cycled through photos of his fans in his merch. All right, now it's time to see some hot, sexy bitches wearing my Hot Topic shirts. Damn. Oh, if I Justine wasn't watching, I would leave all of you. And when I saw that, I thought, isn't this almost exactly one of the reasons that we are canceling Onision? I think if I knew more about Shane Dawson back then, I would have hated him then, and I think that would have carried on over to now. There were the Hey Millie skits that involved a puppet that was supposed to be a character that was a sexually abused child. We're making porn together! No, we're not Everyone making come porn. on down and watch Ralph and the grown man make porn with an eight-year-old! So Millie, you a fan of the D? Are you talking about your big d What does thing mean? Can you explain it to me in graphic detail? Caught up in all of these sexually driven conversations for laughs. And bearing in mind, all of these weren't small, just Shane Dawson productions. I believe at least some of this was done with the Fine Brothers. So there's a certain element to this that I'm trying to wrap my head around. Was this truly the comedy climate at the time and we're failing to recognize some of that? Is it something that just kind of flew under the radar for no good reason? I think that perhaps it was close enough to what was considered edgy but acceptable at the time. But in my opinion, wasn't okay even for the time. But I think maybe perhaps it was close enough to what was acceptable at the time that it did fly under the radar. I'm hoping that that's why. Otherwise, what am I left with? What are, what are all of us left with other than just being kind of pissed off that whoever saw that let it go? So that brings up the topic of what was acceptable at that time. So bearing in mind that I am pretty close in age to Shane Dawson, I can speak to what was deemed acceptable, more or less, going through the 90s and early 2000s. D'Angelo said in his video, and I like that he recognized this, though I think he was just a little off the mark. He's very young, so he is basing his judgment on the research he's done, which is very extensive. But D'Angelo said that at the time, un-PC humor was acceptable, but what was not acceptable was making black people or other minority groups the butt of your joke. Um, I think it was more, he said something more along the lines of dehumanizing these people and all of that. So I think that there is, I think that that is accurate mostly, but what we're not recognizing is that there was a certain type of humor that was acceptable growing up in the 90s and in the early 2000s, in which comedians exploited stereotypes and generalizations. And that was socially acceptable up until not that crazy long ago. Um, growing up through the 90s, I can say as a fantastic example, is just about every Rob Schneider character ever, or at least in Adam Sandler movies. So that is, Adam Sandler movies are something that we grew up on. In my very ethnically diverse family, we grew up on Adam Sandler movies, Jim Carrey movies, and in a lot of these types of comedies, stereotypes were made into funny characters. And I think that the idea, because I believe I've had these conversations as a much younger person around that time, that it's not okay to laugh. Now, I'm not saying any of this stuff is okay now. I'm saying at the time, the conversation was kind of more or less, it's not okay to laugh at these stereotypes in a hateful way. And it's okay if a comedian makes these jokes as long as they're willing to make fun of everyone. That was kind of the, the caveat, is that if you are willing to make fun of everyone. In fact, I think D'Angelo used South Park as an example. And one thing a lot of us loved about South Park is that they made fun of everybody equally. But the condition that these comedians and shows were not making those stereotypes the butt of their jokes, that's not, I don't believe that to be true. 
Um, I think very much, especially South Park was an example of making fun of people and stereotypes and all of that to the greatest extent, just to kind of illustrate a point about how ridiculous people can be, right? That's kind of what I take from South Park. The other example I think of in terms of what, in my opinion, didn't happen that long ago, though I am ancient at 34. So whatever we were watching 10 years ago to a lot of YouTube viewers is old. That's like vintage. Whereas to me, I'm like, yeah, that stuff is new. <laughs> so Key and Peel, that stuff is new. And I still to this day rewatch Key and Peel and one of the things that they do is they play characters that are stereotypes of certain ethnic groups. And I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't laugh at those skits. In particular, the skits where both Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele play Mexican men. They play cholos specifically. Okay, homies, so this is what we have to do. Like, we gotta sell more drugs. We gotta make more crimes happen. Roberto, where are we? Carlito, you're bleeding, I say. Who cares, man? I'm chilling home. I don't care about that stupid shank. And as a Mexican person, you can write me off as white because I'm white passing, but I grew up in a family that thought these jokes were funny. And in fact, it was my family that I shared these skits with that we laugh together. So it's, it's complicated. This is, again, I feel like I need to put this disclaimer throughout this video is that I am not excusing what the fuck Shane Dawson did. What I'm trying to wrap my head around is what was going on at the time that made people think it was okay not to cancel him outright when it happened. So I've known just as much as the next person, I guess, more or less, that Shane Dawson had a history just about like any YouTuber of making insensitive racist remarks or jokes in their past. In fact, that's what Jenna Marbles uh, highlighted for us on her way out um, as she quit YouTube, essentially. I'd seen his apologies for these. And really, when people talked about Shane Dawson's racism, I think the only example that I ever saw was just this quick little clip or even just a still image of Shane Dawson with like drawn on eyebrows, messy lipstick, hoop earrings. And because I only saw a little bit of that character and considering the climate, considering that he'd been called out for it, considering that he'd apologized for it and expressed to us how much he'd grown, I figured, again, like, he apologized for it. He seems like a pretty decent dude. Like, not a huge deal. A lot of people were doing that at the time. I talked about this in a Colleen Ballinger video. I didn't quite, when I made that video, I didn't quite um, have, understand the distinction between what Colleen Ballinger did with her video mocking a Mexican woman versus the example that I used in that video, which D'Angelo Wallace also used, um, which was D's character named Martina Martinez in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, in which she played a hyper stereotyped version of a Hispanic woman, particularly a Puerto Rican woman. Um, excuse me, can I talk to you? What? You're supposed to white boys, right? Can I ask you a question? When you be in the clubs and you be dancing, why you look so stupid? <laughs> I'm just playing. So learning the distinction between those two, um, I liked D'Angelo's explanation that one example makes fun of that group of people and the other example is making fun of the person who is so stupid and insensitive and offensive and racist that they are the ones making the jokes that's also the reason for why it was acceptable to a lot of people that robert downey jr wore blackface throughout the entire movie tropic thunder Whew, this is a complicated topic i hope some of you guys understand where i'm trying to come from here because this is really just a discussion it's not even a point i'm really trying to make but at that time when i saw this little tiny clip shane dawson making fun of a latina girl
Okay, whatever. He apologized. Not a huge deal. I wasn't personally like offended to some crazy amount. The mention of blackface had been thrown around around the time, around the summer as Shane Dawson was starting to be canceled, but I hadn't seen the examples. Now I understand that there is a completely different element of bad associated with blackface that is not something that I as a Hispanic woman can relate to when I see somebody play a Hispanic character. I understand, you understand, we all should understand that there is a history with blackface. It definitely was aimed to depict black people as stupid and less than. So I think that the general population has started to understand that there are certain historical implications that come along with that. Um, and I think it's a good thing that we all recognize that. But again, I hadn't seen any examples of this, so I didn't know if maybe he just kind of did so perhaps in the way that Jenna Marbles said she did and apologized for that and was like, yeah, you know, it was just a character that I was playing. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. So all of this is just, it feels like it could be a lot of like kind of minor infractions. And I can't be the only person who felt that way because this man has been famous on this platform for over a decade. The issue is that it wasn't until I watched D'Angelo's video that I realized the extent to which, and maybe I don't even know the extent to which, Shane Dawson was using blackface. And oh my God, was it not okay? That wasn't, that was not okay. So many celebrities and public figures are having to apologize for costumes and things where they didn't realize at the time or just simply ignored the fact that blackface is offensive, they used it for a costume. This is downright a minstrel show, what, what Shane Dawson has been doing. There are times where he used like makeup and fully put on blackface. There were times that he freaking painted his face black. And, and I can't reconcile that. I can't understand how that was able to happen and he got away with it. He continued to be famous and here we are now, where now is the time that we're paying attention to these things is something had to happen like Jenna Marbles coming out with her video and then Shane, Jeffrey and Tati's drama coming to the forefront. It took that for these things to come forward. What's disappointing for me is that most of the places that I've seen report on this did not point out those super egregious examples, not just some, you know, Latina character with a hoop earring, it was straight up extreme blackface over and over again, making black people the butt of your joke over and over again. Almost as nasty as the black girl's hair on the back of the box. She's doing, she doesn't know how to make a video. She's black. She doesn't even know how to, she just slaps her keyboard. Making remarks at children over and over again that were of a sexual nature. I'm a fuck him. I'm a fuck her. Then I'm a fuck him. Then I'm gonna make him react to it telling his cousin that he has a lot of child masters in his audience, so why don't you try eating this cocktail wiener? Eat it slowly. Like, what? 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 I feel sick to my stomach. I'm not blaming any one person, of course, except Shane Dawson. I'm not blaming any one person on the internet who's reported on this, but I just don't understand collectively how all of that was made public and we didn't care until yesterday, essentially. I fully understand why the Smiths would have an issue with Shane Dawson and went off on Twitter the way they did, but why didn't we know about that when it happened? Why did this man continue to rise to fame? I, I keep asking this question because that is really what is on my mind. And I, that's the thing I cannot sort out. I cannot reconcile that. I do still believe that there is a possibility that all of these things were made in the name of comedy. It does not make any of that behavior excusable. Not at all. Not, not even close to it. But I still don't know that I think Shane Dawson is a sh 
person in the same way that Jeffree Star is. So while I am just so disgusted by all these new things that I've seen, these new old things that I've seen from Shane's past, I think that it's possible, it's possible that that was due to Shane being really, really fucking stupid about what he thought was funny, what he thought could be seen as jokes. Jeffree Star, on the other hand, we've seen be downright bigoted and mean-spirited with his remarks. So I don't think anybody truly is going to fight with me on on that opinion of Jeffree Star. Um, I, at this point, have a really disgusting taste in my mouth from these thoughts, these videos, these talks of Shane Dawson. I feel embarrassed, stupid, and duped for not knowing about most of this. And yeah, I am, I'm left wondering, how did this happen? That's really what I want to know. It's not even, I don't even just want to know how did this happen over the course of several years without anybody calling him out for it, but also how did it happen that over this summer we only saw like three small examples of these things reported on over and over again? Why did it take me watching D'Angelo Wallace to actually see the true extent to which these behaviors went. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are other people who reported on this too. I just, we should have, we should have known more. So hopefully this video serves to spread a little bit more awareness about those things. I'll say it again. I am sorry that I was not aware of these things when I made my last video, but I do think it is an important conversation for us to have. It is an, an important conversation for everyone to have. I think that everybody's voice deserves to be heard on these topics, though we do need to recognize that our own inherent privileges, which most of them have some to some degree, but I want for these conversations to be accessible. I don't want to be written off if I'm just going to give it to you straight. Like, I don't want to be written off. And my experiences growing up and my experiences um, with ethnicity to be tossed out the window because of the way I look to you now. Though I understand, I understand where that criticism comes from, but I just hope that people can think a little bit deeper. But yeah, I don't really have anything amazing, any like conclusion, you know, I, I make these videos somewhat like essays that I wrote in school. So there's like, here's your topic paragraph, and then here are your body paragraphs, and then here's your conclusion. I don't have a conclusion. I am left with the question I started with, which was, how the hell did this happen? So if anybody's got answers for that, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see more videos around this conversation, but specifically how this happened. And yeah, I, I think that it is probably a good time for Shane Dawson to go ahead and retire.